So last last uh, video, I showed how the different ligands in the certain octahedral geometry interact differently with different orbitals. And in class, we'll do the p orbitals and s orbitals as well. But here, let's, let's kind of do the MO diagram and see what ends up changing with our relative orbital energies. So suppose that we're doing ML6 again. And we want to know what that MO diagram looks like. So again, just like you've done before with diatomic atoms, we can start uh, and kind of in interact our different uh, compounds. So typically, let's start with put the metal on the left. So here's my metal over here. So I'm going to put the atomic orbitals of my metal. So for a transition metal, uh, we have 3D, OK, let's say our, th our, third row, our first row of transition metals, so 3D elements. So the ordering of our orbitals is going to be, uh, so our 3D, so as we go up in energy, 3D will be the lowest. So we have, in the free atom, we have five degenerate D orbitals, DZ squared, DX squared, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then the 4s turns out to be above it slightly. So then we have 4s. And then above here, we have 4p. And of course, for the transition metals, the s and the p are empty. Because like I said, when we start binding our ligands to it, then we consider that the d orbitals the lowest in energy. That's where your, all your electrons will be. <coughs> OK, so you're a metal. And then we have our six ligands over here. And then so if we only consider them kind of like sigma type ligands, and we, can, we can kind of consider them like as, as s orbitals. And so typically, these are more electronegative than the metal. So these will be lower in energy. So here, I'll, I'll just draw like kind of six of the same. And so like I mentioned before, these are going to be all filled because ligands are Lewis bases. So they have to have two electrons to donate into the metal. So these are all filled. So when we start interacting them, uh, then what ends up happening is that uh, we form bonding, anti-bonding combinations. So we'll form our bonding orbitals. So don't worry about the bonding orbitals. The reason being, uh, so bonding, so we form some sigma bonds. And so the reason we don't worry about them is because these are all filled. And they're all close in energy to the ligand, which is more electronegative. So these are kind of like ligand-centered electrons, basically. We'll think about it that way. Um, but then what's important is the d orbital splitting. So as we form these bonding combinations, we also form anti-bonding orbitals. So just like I showed in the last video, the only d orbitals that our ligand sphere can interact with are our dx squared minus y squared and our dz squared, for the reasons that I drew. So as a result, our three d orbitals over here, so x, y, x, z, y, z are all non-bonding. So they do not change in energy from the original d orbital energy um, because ligands can't interact with them. And then, but the x squared minus y squared can. So we've already formed our bonding combination. So we form anti-bonding d orbitals. So these go up in energy now. So x squared minus y squared and dz squared. So these become sigma star in character, or ML sigma star. OK. And then because these orbitals are all kind of up here, they're closer in energy to the metals. These are kind of, we consider these are, are basically our metal d orbitals still. And uh, as we continue on, what we'll see here, OK, so oh, sorry, for symmetry labels, you might see in the literature or in your textbook, this is for octahedral. This is our T2G and EG. So you have symmetry labels, so don't worry about those um, unless you take uh, advanced and organic. OK. And then I'll just finish the diagram. Our S orbital also can f interact with the ligand orbital, so we again form an antibody combination. So this is also sigma star. And then up here, our P orbitals also can interact. So oh, this is A1G. This is T1U, also ML sigma star. So the reason that I told you not to worry about this is because, again, they're low in energy and filled. So they don't contribute much to your reactivity. OK. On the other hand, our 
D variables up here is what you need to know for this class. So that for an octahedral, we have this 2 above 3 splitting pattern, e.g. T2G, and that the orbitals are x squared minus y squared and z squared in this top one. And the reason this is the important one for reactivity is because, like I mentioned, in your traditional metal ion, you have a certain number of D electrons. So let's say we have D2. Because, because these bonding ligand-centered orbitals are already filled and low in energy because these ligand orbitals are all filled, these two, like, these two D electrons are going to be up here in this D orbital splitting pattern. So your D count always goes into this particular picture. So as we fill in two electrons, our two electrons here would be exactly here, so these guys. That's why this up here is pretty much the only thing that matters when we're trying to determine the electronic structure of your uh, coordination complex. I'm simplifying things, but this is the general idea. Uh, so from this, we get spin, we get magnetism, we get our colors, we get reactivity. So uh, this is our general picture. Um, let's see, what else did I want to say about this? Oh, and uh, so this, how much this splits, let me do this in this color, this energy difference, Sorry, I'm just going to go over here. This energy difference is called delta O. So O is for octahedral. And so this energy difference, how much this is antibonding, is determined by the nature of your metal and also the nature of your ligands. We'll talk more about that in an upcoming lecture. So this is a splitting pattern for octahedral. Um, I'll show quick some other examples. This is so. This is geometry dependent. So, is structure dependent? So for tetrahedral, if we have tetrahedral over here. we get a different d orbital splitting pattern. So again, we have our bonding, antibonding the same, but this manifold, our five d orbitals are split like so. Let me draw it in a different color. It's split like here. So this is now E, and this is T2, and then these are our x squared minus y squared, dz squared, xz, yz, xy, and then this splitting over here is now delta T. And then so usually delta T is smaller than delta O because of uh, the number of ligands and just the nature of the orbital interaction. Um, on the other hand, if we have square planar, then we can have an even different pattern. So we'll do some examples of how to uh, do these types of bonding patterns in class. Um, but these are the two kind of most common ones, this octahedral and tetrahedral, so you should uh, know what these patterns look like because it, it's really important for how things end up filling up uh, and the properties of your final complexes.